Hello, you beautiful people, and welcome back to the channel. If it isn't welcome back, come and join us here at the Jason 64 community and subscribe to get us to 50 subscribers. I promise you won't regret it here. To get us there, can we go for 10 likes and I will do another listed video like this. Today's video, I will be talking about my top 10 favourite courses from Mario Kart Wii, the 6th Mario Kart game in the franchise released in 2008. This game has 32 courses in total spanning over 8 cups. This list will consist of both Nitro and Retro courses as I will rate my personal favourites. I have compiled this list based on a few objectives that make the tracks fun. These track rankings will be based from playing the tracks at the 150cc speed class. And also another few factors are the creativity of the tracks, how well the design of the track flows with the mechanics and the physics of the game, the shortcuts, how innovative the shortcuts are within the courses and how well they are masked into the environment, the item box placements, a subtle detail that can make massive differences. This will see how well the item boxes are placed for races, mainly for online play, to make the track balanced. The respawns, respawns are vital in getting correct for a racing game, especially for Mario Kart, because the track may seem unfair if you get punished a lot for a small mistake. I'm looking at you Mushroom Gorge. Now remember, this video and list is all for fun, so if you believe that other tracks should be in the top 10, let me know in the comments section down below. Without further ado, let's get the countdown rolling. Number 10, JCN Mario Circuit. A lot of people might not like this track as such, but I think that it is an overall well-balanced track with a variety of turn and terrain types, good item box placements, and some decent shortcuts. The final track in the Leaf Cup never seems to disappoint at the end of Black 3, as it always seems as if the pack is very bunched up and can lead to some brilliant finishes. The obstacle of the Chim Chomp at the start of the track, as well as the Goombas in the off-road section and the Piranha Plants on the final jump make this track feel quite alive and always keeps you on your toes. Not only this, but the track has a great setting of driving around Creature's Castle and that's why it takes number 10 on my list. Number 9, SNES Ghost Valley 2. Now, before you all start turning the video off, hear me out. The physics of the Mario Kart Wii engine seem to flow with the track really well, and the item box placements are very good, especially with such a short track. The third race in the Shell Cup also has a shortcut that is also seen as a sacrifice due to if you take the slower road round the turn, you will be rewarded with an item box. This risk versus reward situation is what makes this track quite unique, as most other intended shortcuts in the game also have an item box in the shortcuts that players can collect, for example, Maple Tree Ray and Mario Raceway, making the normal path seem less relevant. Despite the respawns being mediocre at best, this track is overall quite an interesting experience to race on in a good way, and that's why it's number 9 on my list. Number 8, Mushroom Gorge. A classic in Mario Kart Wii, the third race in the Mushroom Cup shows a totally new and radical design to Mario Kart track building with the introduction of bouncy mushrooms. These giant mushrooms can be bounced and tricked off and in return to get a boost. The track describes Mario Kart Wii as a whole in a sense with its interesting ideas and changes in the Mario Kart formula. The track is also pretty fun to drive, a true challenge to beginners and even the pros with shortcuts aplenty, the grass cut at the last turn being an example. Some players can use a mushroom to skip the final turn and jump over the divot, which is called the gap jump and is very important to learn in high level Mario Kart Wii play. The items are in decent spots but can sometimes feel like there aren't enough around and you can often be left without an item box on this track. Furthermore, the respawns on this track are horrendous, as I said earlier in the intro, with some respawns costing up to 15 seconds. Yes, 15 seconds! This is a serious issue with it being a track on the small side, as it is hard to recover with such a deficit, especially on lap 2 or 3. Other than that, it is a brilliant track and deserves the number 8 spot on my list. 
number 7, N64 Bowser's Castle. The longest track in the game, N64 Bowser's Castle is a well balanced track with a selection of sharp turns, tricky obstacles of the flumps inside the castle section and the fire pillars near to the end of the course. The final track of the Lightning Club is not for the faint hearted at all and is a great track for the experts. Averaging around 1 minute per lap, there is only one true shortcut, the rail cut on the last turn, which is slightly disappointing despite its length. Not only this, but the item boxes are quite spaced out, so there can be times that you don't have an item box for approximately 40 seconds if you miss one of the sets of boxes. However, the track design is amazing and that's why it gets number 7 on my list. Number 6, Rumble Volcano. The first and only volcano themed track in Mario Kart to date, Rumble Volcano is a track that is always chaos and can create insane finishes. Many intentional shortcuts have been found around this track, especially in the mid part including the lava respawn glitch and the rock hop shortcuts that are quite creative. The concept of the track falling apart until most of the surrounding area has sunken is an amazing dynamic and gives a truly different perspective every lap and is quite refreshing. There are some great obstacles also, with a volcano in the near background shooting fireballs and fire snakes all around the track. The trees around the track also fit in with the extremely difficult track with the dead purple and even extraterrestrial presence which fits with an unhabitable environment. However, one flaw with this track is that it can become very bumpy at times especially when you have a lot of horizontal momentum you mainly with the ending part of the track where the track branches off in two different sections. The item boxes are in perfect places for this track and it allows for strategic gameplay of whether to hold your mushrooms for the shortcut or chain the boxes to be safe and go on the normal path. A similar dynamic to Ghost Valley 2's shortcut and that's why it has number 6 on my list. Number 5 Toad's Factory the final track of the Mushroom Cup, this track is an amazing design track that constantly changes the environment and settings throughout the lap which makes the track go by really quickly and is a joy to play when it is picked. The track starts with compactors that when pressed change brick blocks into item box, a subtle detail that I really enjoy. The next section is the outside shipping area where crates are carried along the conveyors being imported and exported out of the factory. The next section is a big U-turn on conveyors which freshens up the terrain and the last section is back outside where the tractors show and remove boost panels on top of the deep mud off-road. As you can see the environment is constantly changing and is a very fun and lively time. The shortcut of cutting the lake on the final corner mixes a great amount of skill and creativity and this leads to it being at number 5. Number 4, GBA Bowser Castle 3. An easy track to learn, but an extremely hard track to master. GBA Bowser Castle 3 gives a brilliant contrast in its aesthetic with the burning orange lava and the fireballs to the cool aqua blue brick blocks for the track and the walls. The 90 degree turns are a true challenge on this track with multiple fonts scattered around which can cause issues for people when they arrive at them when they are down on the floor. The yellow mini jumps can have a lot of shortcut potential whereby you can use them with or without a mushroom to jump the bottom left section of the track here. The fireballs also bring an interesting challenge as you can go for the item bots that move along the thing grid of path where you can risk being hit with a fireball as a result. This is another risk versus reward situation but it is very unlikely for the risk to occur so will lose you little time if you get it wrong. It does an amazing amount right for a flat track which secures its top 4 position. Number 3 N64 Mario Raceway an absolute classic among the Mario Kart community, N64 Mario Raceway is renowned for being the track with the most shortcuts in the game, where it is possible to cut most of the track off with items due to the depth of the off-road. The layout of this track is also brilliant, among with my favourites due to the feel of the track being quite similar to a traditional racetrack with a range of wide sweeping turns and tight sharp hairpins. 
the track which also shows a feel of almost nostalgia with the generic textures of the brick wall as well as the giant mushroom and the gigantic pipe near to the end of the lap. With the severe emphasis on shortcuts on this track, it allows item sandbagging where players wait or go back around the track and use better items to catch up. This alternating strategy is something that I truly enjoy as it changes the dynamic of gameplay in Mario Kart Wii, earning its way to the bottom podium position. Number 2 DS Delfino Square An absolute fan favourite, the third track of the Banana Cup brings you through the vibrant and lively town of Dolphino Square, located on the sun-drenched tropical paradise of Isle Delfino. We're so pleased to welcome you to our beautiful home. This brilliant track opens with a wide uphill section to the Pianta Monument as the symbol of the square, followed by a tight and twisty section that weaves through the streets, including a spur path. The middle part of the track goes into the harbour and the market, where there are a multitude of shortcutting opportunities, including jumping over to the other side of the dock and going through an alleyway between the shops. To finish off this track is a drawbridge that changes constantly, raising and declining, which gives an interesting dynamic for races. The item boxes are placed in perfect positions and the perfect amount for a tight track, which can cause a good amount of chaos, especially on the final lap meaning that it earns itself the runner-up spot. Now, before we go into my favourite track in Mario Kart Wii, here are some special mentions that just missed out being in the top 10. spot goes to number one DK Snowboard Cross the best track in my opinion is DK Snowball Cross, aka DK Summit. This track gives a true feel of going down a ski slope and almost gives it a feel at being at the Winter Olympics. This track starts off with the gates opening and you shooting through a cannon up to the top of the snow course. I also enjoy the subtle detail of the ski lift beside the track and it gives liveliness and makes it seem more like a ski resort. The track's main aspect is with the half-life jumps which can be used to take very tight lines. The track also has large jumps followed by moguls that racers can trick from. The next section shows the main shortcut section of the track where you can skip the S-curve by jumping over the gaps over the abyss below. The last section then includes the main half-pipe trick section with thick off-road and shy guy snowboarding. The item boxes on this track are slightly lacklustre, there's not enough being around on the track but the intuition of it allows it to be top of the pile in the Mario Kart Wii track roster. Hey there, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this list that I have made, and I'd hope to make more of these in the future if you guys enjoy it. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to get me to 50 subscribers. I hope to see you again, thanks very much, and goodbye.